Thanks for tuning in, I'm Cody with up to code Today I'm gonna to show you how to assemble the Nadira One Series forms. Now the reason we're actually shooting a whole bunch of videos on this series and the, the Nadura one-sided ICF system is because we, we just actually finished pouring our first foundation with this. And when we were looking for information on just tips and how to form it properly, we couldn't really find any information. There's barely any photos and no videos of it. So today we're gonna show you how to assemble it. And we also have just a ton of other videos that we're shooting and I'll mention those throughout the series. So stay tuned and let's show you how to put one of these together. So first off, we have a video on the components, but we'll run through those again really quick. In the series, you're gonna need your form ply. We bought this stuff from Nadura because it's 18 inches tall, 96 long. It's actually got these tapered cones in there so that when you peel it off, the snap ties aren't flush with the concrete. You'll see images of that. You'll need your one-sided form. Here's the jig to help you get the ties all snapped in. I'll show you that in a sec. We got our multi-link ties. We'll show you how those go together. Webs, so these, this is a four inch web that will give us a six and five eighths concrete wall. And then you can get six, eight, 10, 12 inch webs. And after that, we just have some screws to fasten it all together. So let's, uh, let's jump into it and show you how to assemble this. And we got Mike with me today, the Swiss carpenter bot. He's always super help helpful. First thing you wanna do is get your jig ready and get the multi-link ties attached to your plywood form. So you need 12 multi-link ties for every form. Right. So the jig just allows your plywood to line up with the multi-link ties. And as long as you fit into these corners, everything will be lined up nicely. The next thing you wanna do is install the screws. Now these screws come from Nadura. Instead of using the two inch that they recommend, we're actually using the two and a half inch. Some installers had suggested using these. Now sometimes these tend to just barely bottom out in that multi-link tie. In some cases we have to put a second washer on there, but it's just because it just doesn't quite suck it down tight. Um, the other thing you want to note is don't over torque these. This isn't like a wood screw where you want to sink and make the head flush. As soon as the washer and the screw make contact, you want to stop. So you'll want to clutch your drill. Don't use an impact or they'll snap. And every drill is different. So you just got to play around and clutch it differently so that you just get it, make that first contact and you'll need 24 screws for every full form as well. So just if you're doing calculations, make sure to keep that in mind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Now that you have one form all assembled, get that out of the jig and you'll want somebody just putting these together full time. So get that out of there. One thing you want to keep in mind is outside corners. We're going to film some videos on how we determined the length of the plywood when we're doing corners. Now you can actually have the multi-link ties to all your plywood. It's easy to cut because you can have it on a sawhorse. You can make cuts. It's not a big deal. Sometimes you have to pull the screws out, but it's not a big deal. But when we get to actually assembling the ICF portion of this, we'll give you a few tips on that as well. So now it's time to assemble it and make one complete form. Now this trick 
is just mostly if you're on full panels. If you have cuts around window box, door box, or corners, you might want to assemble it later after you've cut your form ply or cut your foam. So just keep that in mind. We have another video on all the forming techniques that we've done as well. So that's a separate video, you want to check that out. So now we just grab these webs. Mike, you want to give me a hand? <clears throat> Get one going. And if you do one on each side, then uh, the rest will just slide right in the place. I like that. Now, one thing to note on these, if you come in and take a look, they have these positive hooks or these tabs. So once they slide down into place, you got to make sure, like you can get them back out if you make a mistake. It's not a big deal. But when these slide down, you can't lift them up and you can't push them down. And that's because the concrete, when you pour a wall, it'll just shove them right down to the bottom and it'll zipper your whole wall apart. So that's a genius thing. So you gotta just kind of be cognizant of that those staying in place. So yeah. It's... And like I said, these webs come in different widths. So like I said before, this is a four inch tie, but because the multi-link is two and five eighths, you have to account that with whatever concrete thickness you want, this multi-link tie is always two and five eighths. So you have gotta order your webs accordingly. And another thing I wanna note is this is a standard two and five eighths form, but right here, we got the XR35 one-sided form. That's four inches of foam. So if you're doing the one-sided form system, this is four inches or R17 and a half. It's R35 if you're doing the, the two-sided ICF system. So this is just one way that you can add insulation value to the system. And I'm gonna shoot another more specific video on how to add more as well. So stay tuned for that. We got lots coming out people, so you just gotta keep watching. I let you go you might have noticed that this isn't sitting perfectly level and that's because the knobs are still on the bottom now let me show you what I mean and I'll show you kind of two options that you have when setting your first row and just basically adding some tips to the video so if you come look over here each form is 18 inches so the ICF's 18 inches tall so is the plywood so you can see if you're up against the bottom of your footing these knobs are going to be making it out of level. So you have two options. You can just cut these off so that it sits level, or we have a second option for you guys that we're going to try, which might actually just help average things out on your footings if your footings are a little bit out of level. So we assemble this. So we're just using scrap pieces, but you can see we're not sitting level. So if you're on your footing, you'd either have to cut the knobs off or this second idea is something that we're toying with and basically adding some plywood strips to the bottom of this formwork. And this is an option that you could use that if, like we we're actually pretty particular on our footings. They're dead on level so that we don't have the up and down factor to deal with. But if you have just one rock or one little wave in your footing with this one series, it could really bugger you up. So Mike and I were thinking of maybe putting half inch plywood, three quarter inches thick, in maybe three locations on your formwork. You'd have to tack it in with just one or two two inch nails just so that they don't slide out of place. 
But if you did that, you could average things out and a little wave in your footing isn't gonna mess your whole day up. Saves you time from having to cut the knobs off over here. You'd still spray foam this side. And if you watch our other video on our forming tips, you have to do a kicker with this system as well. So that's a wrap. I told you I was gonna show you how to assemble the one series block, which I did, but I gave you a few other tips in the meantime. So, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe and check our links below because we have a whole list of affiliates and gear, social media that you can catch us on. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.